See, when people brag about how intelligent they are, something tells me that they might not be that intelligent after all. You see these smart speakers? The, the company always sells them as some intelligent, you know, convenient speaker products that is going to make your life better. And they keep telling you that. What does that tell me? These things are stupid. <laughs> I've always thought that. And turns out I was right. These are fucking stupid. All right, so I'm going to do a tear down these. But before I get into that, let me talk a little bit about the absolutely horrendous experience I had with the user interface of these things. So basically the whole story is I'm in a meltdown state because I was trying to get these to play multi-room, but oh boy, it was a nightmare. First of all, um, I can't get the speaker connected to my Google Home app for some reason. I don't know, the speaker's playing just fine. It's actually playing audio from my phone, but it's not connected. Hmm, very interesting. Um, second of all, when both of these are connected and I can you know, adjust the volumes and see what's casting onto it and whatnot on these speakers, guess what? The media player, the little mini player down there at the uh, favorites tab of the Google Home app is gone. You can't find it. I can't open it and then cast it to both of these speakers. But, uh, these are supposed to be multi-room speakers. And its most important feature is to play multi-room shit. It can't even do that. I spent an hour dealing with that. Nope. This still does not work. I still haven't figured it out. And I don't think I'm bad at tech. Really, wow, Google, you guys need to do better. It's as if some college interns wrote the Google Home program. It's horrible, 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 horrible. Anyways, I've always believed that if you're buying these speakers for the sound, great. It's a great choice because they really do sound good. And actually, I think they sound better than most of the competitors. Um, but if you're buying them for the features and to, quote unquote, make your life better, don't skip. Find something else. Otherwise, you're going to have a meltdown just like I did. Well, <laughs> that's enough of me rambling and yapping. Let's get into the teardown. Let's first start from this little freak. I pulled the grill off. It's really easy. Just pry. This is what you get. Um, this is some touch, capacitive touch thingies that you can adjust the volume with. Yep, that's definitely an engineering failure because it's a pain in the ass to use. Horrible. And, um, you know, when I'm positioning this speaker, which requires me to grab the top, uh, yep, it gets all jittery and shit. Yeah, um, very, very annoying. And you can't even unplug this. If you said, okay, I'm, I've had enough of that stuff, I want to unplug this, uh, this, this, this board so that I won't get all that uh, capacitive touch bullshit. Oh, there's microphones on there. The Google Assistant won't work anymore if you unplug it. <laughs> yeah, good luck dealing with that. All right, let's, let's get this dumbass thing open. Back here's another microphone and your uh, switch to turn the microphone on or off. Yep. Look at the back here. We got two primary circuit boards. This one is where all the amplifier is at, you know, and then the power stuff. This over here is all the smart and the wireless stuff. And then this enclosure, very interesting. They're actually using like a cast metal enclosure, which is, uh, you know, like those Genelec speakers. Uh, it's a sealed enclosure with a 3-inch woofer in there and a 0.75-inch tweeter in there. And here's the board. It's basically where all the smart stuff is at. You got your processor and uh, um, RAM and uh, memory and all that stuff. And the Wi-Fi module on the other side. I'm not going to put a lot of focus on this because that's not the point. What we're going to take a look at is the acoustics aspect of the speaker. Meaning the amplifier and all that. Which is all concentrated here in this board and whatever is inside of this enclosure. Uh, maybe just the driver. Probably a capacitor. I don't see any over here. Uh, but it could also be one of those SMD ones. We'll have to take this board off to find out. Um, we got six wires coming in there. So yeah, I think the, the capacitor is actually placed in there. Pretty smart design. They could uh, conserve some space. Um, let's get this thing apart. Let's see what we got. All right, we're looking at a what? TAS 5A25M smart amplifier. It's like one of those I don't know, ESM tier or ACME amps from a lot of Chinese speakers. It's got everything in it. DSP, blah, 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 all that stuff, you know, dynamic bass adjustment, whatever you think of. So that, you know, the, the sound processing isn't done through the software uh, inside the speaker. It's actually done through that little bad boy there. Um, so, yeah, interesting. Okay, let's uh, get this thing apart, see what we got inside. All right, here's your bass driver, very beefy unit. Um, it's got it's a three-inch bass driver with a big ferrite magnet. Um there it says it's 30 watts, 4 ohms, um, vented voice coil, vented spider. Very good driver. 
uh, sealed enclosure, but not a low compliant, uh, not a high compliance unit. Very interesting. So I think uh, there's probably some added mass onto the cone. Cone's probably a little heavier than normal. Um, still, a uh, great driver. You can see that this is capable of plenty of excursion without any sort of distortion. And then you also get that uh, 0.75 inch tweeter. It's just your regular tweeter. It's nothing special. And then, as I've said, there is indeed a capacitor in there. It's probably for filtering. doesn't look like a power capacitor. Very interesting. Let's uh, move on from this then. All right, big guys time. Still the same seal enclosure, but this time double the woofer, double the tweeter. The woofer size has got bitter, bigger. The tweeter size has also got bigger. All right, let's pop it apart. All right, the moment we pop it open, we see two huge woofers. These are four, four and a half inch drivers. Big, big magnet. Wow, it's good, good stuff. This, this is a huge magnet. Wow. And then two very interesting looking tweeter. That is certainly an interesting magnet structure. I'm assuming that's heat sinking. Um, I don't know. It doesn't look like NeoDB magnet's going to look like that. But I think the, the actual magnet is inside there. I'm going to get the tweeter out and have a good look. These are quite interesting if you ask me. We got some mic assemblies. We got another one at the top. Uh, and then these woofers, interesting. Very, very interesting. I don't know what they're thinking, why they're doing this. But these woofers... They're dual coil. They're dual coil. That is certainly interesting. Um, we'll have to take a look at the amplifier, see how many class D amplifiers there are, because you want to know my guess, since you rotate it uh, to stand up upright, um, this becomes a mono speaker. So the dual voice coil pod probably has something to do with that. I'm assuming it's because they don't have too many, you know, uh, digital to analog converter outs to the amplifier so they it seems as if they're only using two like four channels to drive this thing so like um hmm i don't know that if that would make sense I, I i don't really understand this i i have to pop this apart get this black thing away to be actually be able to see what's really behind that circuit board but this is quite an interesting design i i'm a little puzzled right now who Let's 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 first take a look at the drivers. How how about that? Interesting. Here's our tweeter driver. It is a this looks a lot like um those old Advent Fright Egg tweeters. I I don't know if I could call this a balanced drive or it's just a average six silk dome tweeter with an extra thick surround. But I'm pretty sure the surround do something um, unlike your, 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 you know, your regular silk dome tweeters. The surround is probably a part of the uh, diaphragm. It's kind of like a headphone driver, if you ask me. And yes, that is indeed the heat sink. The magnet is underneath that. Um, and as you can see, the transparent part of this driver, that is the residence chamber. So that, you know, this uh, tweeter could have a extended frequency range. Probably could play all the way down to 1000 hertz. All right, look at that. Wow, four and a half inch, big, big magnet. Um, dual voice coil, metal voice coil former two, and then a vented uh, voice coil, vented spider, and then even a vented pole piece. Everything in this is vented. Wow, it's got an aluminum cone. Uh, just looks like a driver that would have a big excursion. I am going to do a test on these and show you the excursion, of course. And I will upload a short for that, so stay tuned. All right, we kind of have a problem right now. Um, I can't get this thing off because there are these. They're too deep inside. I don't have the right Torx uh, screwdriver for them. I'm in, I'm, I'm in the States. I left them in Taiwan, so don't think I could uh, actually pop it apart. But it's quite simple, really, and there's not a lot of stuff. There's only three boards we're looking at, and um, the audio is definitely all on... That one, we're looking at two TA5756M uh, amplifiers. These are 30-watt stereo amplifiers. And looking at how the wires are configured, it seemed as if one of the channels from these uh, 5756Ms are used for the woofers. Um, very interesting. So... Either they're hooking up the uh, 
dual voice coil drivers, the two voice coils in parallel or either they're being done in series. So this one, which is this, goes to the right side um, set of coil along with the tweeter. Also going to the right and the other amplifier is driving the left unit. Again, these uh, amps have built-in DSP. I don't know if there's EQ built into the software in this thing, but I'm going to say they probably tune it all uh, using the amp. And then if you zoom out a little bit, you see this whole cage of um, trusses. This, oh shit, this reminds me of one of those uh, mechanical cla mechanical engineering classes that I was forced to take and i'd do all the calculations the force loadings and all these things it was a pain in the ass and yeah they probably did some calculations that's why they look so regular here um they probably did some calculations on the loading of all these trusses right here and so that this would be um the best uh the most rigid support for these walls so these walls are absolutely flat and there's no ribs on them and um these points that's connected to the back of this this speaker probably is also calculated one to be here 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 and here um was also probably there's probably some simulations or calculations gone through it um you can see google actually put a lot of effort in this stuff you'd see the uh um the nest audio too the there's a wave guide for the tweeter and three dots around it those are also you know some calculated stuff so yeah big shout out to google they're actually putting a lot of effort in this thing and those uh trusses also visible in the front panel, which is, you know, also doing the same thing. Shows effort. Uh, they put a lot of effort. And yes, I did do the knock test. It is very rigid. It's as if it's like uh, some kind of mechanic, uh, like a metal enclosure of some sort. Very good job. Google did a very good job here. Yeah. Wow. Shit, man. I, I'm not going to lie. The, the mechanical engineering courses and nightmares coming back to me is the, the class was fucking tough <laughs> but anyways yeah it's interesting to see that in practice they, they actually did a really really good job doing the engineering of this whole thing um i don't think i could go further until i get a better screwdriver this thing does not fit uh and i'm not gonna try to use a very dinky little l l l shaped wrench or whatever the fuck you call it i'm not gonna use that it's gonna be too much of a pain so yeah, and then there's also this power supply. Um, let's see how many volts it it puts out. Uh, oh, it's a dual rail. Dual rail 16.5. Interesting. It seems to be a dual rail, right? Am I right? Let me let me double check. Nope, I was wrong. It is simply a 16.5 volt power supply. That's it. Um, yeah, anyways, that's the speaker. This is, um, so we're looking at, uh, 120 watts actually we could make this a battery powered speaker if we really want to um it's 16.45 volts that would be four 18650s or four 21700s for a prolonged period of battery life and then you gotta uh, you gotta get rid of that power supply and then replace it with like a you know charger brick or something you know socket uh, it actually is doable it looks very viable to me so uh, if, if you're doing that out if, if you have a google home or anything out there and you want to just take this to the on the go for uh 18650 packs is going to do you the job you got to replace that power supply though um so yeah there you have it guys i think that is the teardown for now stay tuned for the audio test because i will do a sound check on both of these speakers i will compare the big big guy with um the ue hyper hyper boom right or a hyper blast i forgot the name eh, yeah one of those ue speakers the biggest one and then a year fun u boom uh u boom x i'm gonna compare it with these two and uh for the small small guy over there i will compare it against the current hua chang bay king the uh sobo uh sobo surge boom three and I am still thinking of the other speaker I would compare it to. I kind of want to make it uh, punch above its weight class. And uh, I don't know, compare it to this, the UE uh, Epic Boom or something. Or, or, or maybe the Tron Smart. Uh, I'm still currently thinking what I should uh, make it compare to. But we'll find out. Um, then again, that's going to be a sound check video. I'm not going to actually talk about all the features and whatnot because I feel like... 
Uh, there's hundreds of YouTubers out there already talking about that. You don't need another guy saying the same shit. So I did a teardown or a partial teardown for the big guy. And uh, we'll do a sound check, a thorough sound check and play some, some tracks and compare it with multiple different speakers. And then uh, let me know if you want to see that LG speaker. Um, I would also do like a comprehensive type of review on that thing. Just, you know, playing some music and then taking it apart. But I'll tell you what, I can't get the woofer out in this thing. It's a horrible design. But if you want to see me do like a partial teardown on that also, I would do it. Um, I guess that's that for now. Yeah.